Let's take a detailed look at Lightroom's new landscape mask, turning this raw file into this final version. If you want to follow along, as always, you can do that by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump right into it. As always, before we're starting with the masking stuff, we want to do the basic adjustments. So let's expand the basic panel. And for the profile, I'm going with Adobe Landscape. This will boost the base saturation. It will also change the exposure very, very slightly, making the darker parts a little bit brighter. Since it's still a little bit too dark, I'm going to bring up the exposure, restoring more details in the shadows of the image. So let's go with something like this. Of course, raising the exposure will also affect the highlights, which is a problem with a bright sky like that. So how do we counter this problem? We're simply going to bring down the highlights. Always pay close attention to this program so you can see what is happening. At this point, we have a pretty nice looking sky, so that's great. I want to further get out details from the shadows. So let's make use of the shadow slider and bring it up. Thus, we're introducing more brightness into this image. Wonderful. Again, looking at this program, you can see there is a little bit of clipping happening in the very darkest parts of the image. We can fix these areas by bringing up the blacks. Again, as you push the black slider, take a closer look at the histogram. And I'm going with something like this. I can hold on the Alt key while adjusting the slider so I can see where the underexposure is happening. You can see this area is not that important. So right around here, that should be fine. I also want to bring up the whites, which will help again, make the image brighter, but it will also help to introduce some more contrast. So right around here is perfect. Now that we have adjusted the exposure, it's time to work on the white balance. I do want to improve this golden hour light a little bit by bringing up the temperature, giving the image more warmth this way. Beautiful. And for light like this, what I really love to do is to add some subtle autumn glow in Lightroom already. And how am I doing this? I'm going to simply bring down the clarity a bit. And let's also drop the dehaze. That's a quick and easy autumn glow effect. I also want to bring up the texture, which will make the details sharper. And then let's bring up the vibrance for stronger colors. Beautiful. So that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see the exposure is looking much, much better with way more details in the shadows. Also, the colors with the golden hour light are much nicer to look at. Now it's time for the masking adjustments. So let's open up the masking panel. And as I said in the intro, we want to check out Lightroom's new landscape mask in detail. So let's click on landscape. Lightroom will detect different objects in your landscape image. So this might take a while. You can see we have a sky selection, a selection for the vegetation, one for the artificial ground and one for the natural ground. I would say let's start with something simple. I want to improve the sky. So I'm clicking on the sky right here and let's click on create mask. Right away, you can see this mask is not perfect, just like with a regular sky mask. There are some gaps left in this tree, but that's not a problem. We need to simply modify the mask to our needs. In this case, I'm going to add a color range mask. And I'm clicking right in here in that blue spot to select the rest of the sky. Of course, this will also select parts of the foreground which are blue. So I can tone down the color range mask by adjusting the refine slider. And if this doesn't work, we could also subtract another landscape mask. And in here, let's click on vegetation and click on create mask to subtract the trees, the leaves and the rest of it from this sky selection. I also want to subtract the linear gradient, taking out the bottom part of the sky because I only want to make the top part of the sky darker. Now that we have created our first mask, I'm going to simply bring down the exposure, making the top part of the sky darker just giving the whole shot a little more contrast this way. I also want to bring down the blacks, further making the sky darker. And I want to drop the temperature, giving the darker part of the sky more of a blue color tone. Now let's do the same for the bottom part of the horizon, just giving it more brightness instead of making it darker. I'm going to start again with a select landscape mask. Then let's one more time choose select sky right here and click on create mask. Since we only want to target the bottom part of the sky, all I need to do is to subtract a linear gradient and I'm taking out the top part of the sky like this to create a perfect selection for this purpose. So what I want to do for the bottom part is to bring up the blacks, 
which will make the bottom part brighter without affecting the highlights too much. I also want to bring down the highlights themselves because this will fix the most blown out areas of the sky this way. Okay, then I also want to introduce more warmth to the brightest part of the sky. Again, I'm using the temperature slider for that. So let's bring it up. I'm going to raise it a lot because I love this golden hour effect. What we can do as well is click on this little color box and use a very specific color for that part of the sky. I want to go with something in the orange range. So somewhere around here and I even want to push the saturation further. Okay, that is looking great. I do think I want to apply one more layer of this to the sky. So one more time, let's create a landscape selection. Again, use the sky and click on create mask. Then I want to subtract a linear gradient and this time I'm taking out pretty much everything except for a very, very tiny part right here on the left side where the sky is the brightest. And in here, what I'm going to do is to bring up the exposure intentionally overexposing this area because right in here, I want to have this very, very bright effect. Let me also bring up the blacks very slightly, but that's looking good. All right. Now what I want to do next is to work on and that road leading into the image. I want to give it a little more depth. And again, let's start with a select landscape mask. I want to choose uh, the artificial ground since we're targeting these roads. And you can see that's a really, really good selection. Again, let's click on create mask. And we need to one more time further adjust this selection. I'm going to subject a simple linear gradient because I just want to target the part right in front of the camera and make this darker. So what I'm going to do in here is to bring down the exposure, giving it this vignetting effect. Wonderful. I also want to bring up the contrast and we could even play around with a little bit of clarity in here, giving the road some more structure. I quite like how this looks, but I want to make the near foreground even darker. So let's again use the select landscape mask, choose the artificial ground, click on create mask. Then we want to subtract the linear gradient and take out everything except for the very near foreground. And in here, I'm going to drop the exposure a little further. Perfect. Now, what about those trees? Let's try to target them. I'm going to create another landscape mask. And let me choose the vegetation. This will select a little bit more than I want to be selected. But still, let's click on create mask. For the next step, I'm going to subtract a landscape mask. And in here, I'm going to choose the natural ground, which I don't want to be selected. I just want to have the trees. So let's click on create mask. And this way, you see we have a nice selection for the trees. Now there are parts selected that I still don't need. I'm going to subtract a brush just getting rid of a few parts right here along the tree. Okay, that's looking good. Then let's change these areas by bringing up the contrast first, giving these spots some more punch. I'm also going to bring up the whites, which will further help with the contrast and make the highlights in these trees look more interesting. And I might as well bring up the shadows just a tiny bit. And let's bring up the temperature to emphasize the golden hour light hitting the trees. Okay, that's looking perfect. Then next up, let's use another landscape mask. This time I'm targeting the natural ground. Again, we have a really good looking selection for that. Let's click on create mask. I want to subtract a brush, just clean it up a bit. Okay, in here, I'm going to bring up the texture, giving all those grass blades some more detail this way. And I'm also going to bring up the whites, which will make the highlights in the foreground brighter. As you can see, using Lightroom's new landscape mask, we were able to edit this image in a very easy way, creating masks that were previously pretty much impossible to create. Next up, I want to add one more mask. So I'm using a radial gradient because I want to add some glow coming in from the left side. And I'm going to make sure to overlap some areas here, like the tree and the grass in the foreground. Then I'm going to heavily increase the blacks for that glow effect. And I'm going to bring down the dehaze, which will make the glow even stronger. That's looking wonderful. Now we can also play around with the temperature slider. First, I was thinking about raising the temperature, but I'm not sure if I like this. Actually, I want to bring down the temperature 
kind of giving this glow a more pure white look. So let's bring it down like this. All right, that's looking nice. At this point, I can deactivate the masks again. So let's take a look at before. This is our image with just a bunch of basic adjustments applied. And that's the image after the masking stuff. Quite the big transformation looks much, much better. Now let's do a little bit of color grading. And we are going to start this in the color mixer. Here, I want to work on the saturation for a moment. I want to bring up all these warm sunset tones. So let's bring up orange. Let's bring up a yellow. Let's also bring up the green tones for a more intense foliage. And I want to bring down the blue tones just a little bit because I think the blue sky is a bit too much at this point. What I want to do as well is to head into the luminance tab and bring down the blue luminance, which again will affect the sky, making it a bit darker this way. Okay. Of course, we can also use split toning in the color grading tab, with which we can further improve that golden hour light. Let's start with the highlights. Of course, since we want to have this golden hour light, we need to set up the hue in that way. That means we're going to choose a warm color tone somewhere in the orange range like this. And then I'm going to pump up the saturation. I want this to look really, really intense like this. Beautiful. I'm also going to use the midtones and use a warm hue again somewhere in the orange range. And let's pump up the saturation again. All right. Now for some color contrast, we're going to head into the shadows. We don't want to overwhelm the viewer with all these warm tones. So we are going to balance that by applying a cold color tone to the shadows like this. And we're going to only use a subtle amount of saturation in this case, because otherwise it might look a bit weird. But that's perfect. Then let's also go down into the calibration tab. As always, I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue because I just like what this does to the colors of an image. I'm going to do this pretty much for every image I take. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation. All right, this is looking beautiful. Next up, let's sharpen this image in the details tab. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details. Of course, we're going to add masking. So only the important areas of the image are affected. Hold down the Alt key while adjusting the slider so you can get this view. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. And we're done with the Lightroom adjustments. Of course, there are still a ton of distracting objects around the image, which I'm going to clean up now. I'm not going to do this in Lightroom because Lightroom is just a little bit too slow for that, in my opinion. So I'm going to right click on the image, go to edit in and choose open as smart object in Photoshop. Now you might be wondering why am I opening this as a smart object? I can use this smart object layer and go back to the raw adjustments. I just need to double click on it, which will take me to the camera raw editor, which is basically Lightroom with a different UI, just so you know. In this case, I want to duplicate that smart object. Then we are going to right click and rasterize the layer. And this layer is the one I use to clean up the image. So let's use the spot healing brush and zoom in. I want to get rid of that lens flare, just brushing over it should be fine. Perfect. Also want to get rid of that tree looking over the horizon. This one as well. Then there's a person chilling on this bench. I'm also going to remove her. And let's see, I want to remove that post. Again, just using the spot healing brush for that. This area would be super annoying to fix with the spot healing brush. I'm just going to grab the lesser tool and I'm drawing a very rough selection around this. And once I have done this, I'm going to use generator fill. So click this button right up here and click on generate. Perfect. And that's a cleaned up version of this image. Of course, there are a few more things I can do. Let me show you. First, I'm going to merge everything into a new layer hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. Then I want to use this layer to create the Alton Glow. I'm going to go onto the filter menu, choose Blur and choose Gaussian Blur. I'm usually going with a radius around 50 pixels for the Alton Glow effect. So let's hit OK. Then right away, I'm going to the Edit menu, go to Fade Gaussian Blur. Under Mode, we want to choose the Lighten Mode and I'm going to bring down the Opacity. Let's go with something around 30% here. That looks much better. Now I don't want in this glow effect to be over the darker parts of the image. That means I'm going to right click on this layer, go to the blending options, 
Now we're going to use something called blend if. If you hold down the Alt key and click on the right side of this arrow, we can drag it up. And as we drag it up, less and less of the darker parts of the image will be affected by this glow effect. So I think something like this looks good. Let's click OK. Now, if I turn off this layer, you can see the glow effect being only applied to the brighter parts of the image, which is exactly what I want. We can further improve this glow by creating a new layer. Then we want to switch the layers blending mode to let's go with soft light then grab the brush by pressing B and set your opacity to something around 14%. And let's make a nice big soft brush like this and set the foreground color up to something rather warm like this soft orange tone. And I'm just going to brush over the brightest areas, making sure to overlap a few objects like the trees. I'm also going to brush along the horizon here and right here in these gaps. Perfect. Finally, let me merge everything one more time, hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. And I want to use the spot healing brush one more time. I forgot to clean up this tree branch, which is ruining the composition. It shouldn't overlap the trees in the distance. You will see in a minute, this will give us a way cleaner image, just like this. Perfect. And that's it for editing this image. What has been your experience using Lightroom's newest mask? Do you have any tricks to share with us? If so, please let us know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.